Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and I asked on Twitter specifically that would you like to see a Mac setup? How do I do my setup on the Mac when I prepare it for the development? There are a lot of tools that almost every computer needs and how do I set up when I use it for professionally coding? Uh, not that much for recording the videos because I use another machine which is a little bit more powerful. Uh, so I said, hey, would you like to see this? A lot of you said yes, a lot of you said no. Uh, but I'm going to listen only for the yes people. So yes, you wanted to see that. So I actually bought a new uh, MacBook here. This is a MacBook Air. And I think this is a perfectly good device any for anybody who is getting started for uh, the development side of it. I'll be using it for app development as well. And yes, the MacBook Air with the M2 chip is completely capable of that. I have chosen the 256, uh, 512 uh, variant of it, not 256, because I'll be keeping some videos in it. And that's the only reason. Otherwise, uh, the base variant is absolutely fine. So let's go ahead and see. This video is going to take a couple of days uh, because today we're going to be just unboxing it and seeing that how does it looks like. And in the later on videos, I'll show you how that's being done. So, all right. So, this is not a very professional unboxing. We are going to just go through all it. All right. So, let me just go through. I don't have a setup specific like unboxer videos. I'm just doing it on my desk itself. Don't need this. I can just throw it out. And uh, ah, this is very sleek. This is very, very sleek that we have here. All right. So let's go ahead and do this all right i love to do this i love to do this all right so it's all done and let's see what's inside the box i know it already i have unboxed two three of the macbook air in the past as well this always takes time finally <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and lift it up it's actually decently heavy as i remember from the macbook air they used to be very light called as air but I don't mind it if you give me extra power, extra battery. I don't mind it at all. Uh, let's go ahead with that. And can we just remove it like this? Yep, there we go. Oh, very sleek. I love this. And what else do we have? We have a cable. Where is the charger? Are they still giving the charger? They are still giving the charger, at least with the MacBooks. Uh, this is very tiny one compared to my old one but good thing that i liked about it is that there are two ports into it one for my phone one for my laptop maybe i don't know all right so this is the setup now what i need to do is there is a shortage of ports here uh, what i need to do is turn it on i have to log in with my apple id i have to turn it on have to log in with my apple id and then install a software so that i can record the screen on into it and i won't be recording i won't be adding any other software other than my recording software so that at least i can show you what i'm doing on the screen otherwise recording this way is really really troublesome so let's catch up in the screen itself where i'll be just adding a screen recorder to it and i'll catch you up inside this one all right this is one of the tough video to record and probably the toughest one because showing up how you are going to set up your laptop is not the easiest of the task without the high production level. I probably need a camera guy just behind me who can record the screen in probably a good condition and can show you all of the things, but it's not really feasible for me as of now. So I'm showing you the recorded version of it and there are a couple of challenges in front of me. I'll already, I'll just directly mention this. First, you can see in the screen itself uh, that there are two bars there. So yes, the MacBook Air screen is not truly 4K. The resolution is a little bit odd. So that's why I need to connect it up to another screen to properly record 4K or HD videos. Uh, but we cannot do much in here. So that is going to be the challenge. Uh, I can just get rid of them by zooming in, cropping it, fill. But then you'll, you won't be seeing the dock, which is the really important part to see it. And you won't be seeing the top navigation bar as well, which is also one of the difficult one. Apart from this, I have installed a couple of recording softwares and my Chrome as well. Apart from this, I haven't installed anything. And during this journey, this will be a little bit of unformal kind of a thing. So I'll walk you through what I use as a daily driver for the storage, why I choose MacBook Air. This is a M2 version uh, with 8 gigs of RAM and uh, 512 uh, of the storage. I don't need that much of high storage. I can go with the base version as well. But since I record a lot of videos, I don't want to run out of the space and the Android Studio and whole of the things we are going to install here because I'm planning to record some videos on upcoming videos on uh, try my hands on Flutter and everything. React Native series is going nice. I want to continue that as well. So I'll walk you through how the installation, storage, and pretty much a lot of things works. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just grab another desktop. 
I usually keep a couple of desktop on my screen because it's much more easier uh, to just switch between them. You are probably writing some code, uh, checking it on the web browser or on the simulator. So it's much more easier for me to work here. And apart from this, the first thing I'll mention is I use uh, Chrome majorly. I do have Safari as well here, but I don't use it much. Uh, the Chrome is the daily driver. And the Chrome is decently set up. It's not fully set up. I usually use a password manager as well to properly set up things and don't want to remember everything. So that's why there. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, going to go ahead and download Mega. Don't get with the suggestion. Yes, there were some suggestions uh, with the Megan Fox. Uh, but no, we are looking for a mega desktop. And you can actually use some others as well, like Dropbox or something. The mega actually is much more cheaper for me and works seamlessly between our teams uh, when they record and edit the videos and pass them on. Uh, it's a nice storage, so I don't... These days, I'm not storing anything in my local drive. It's far more riskier for me because I record a lot of videos. I don't want to get with them. So I'll just go ahead and open this up and just drag and drop. Uh, I will not log into it because that's a different operation. Just wanted to show you that how things are there and how I want to do it. Uh, next up, I would love to do is a bit of a cleanup. So there's too much on my dock I really don't like. Uh, so obviously, all you can do is drag and drop this away and it just removes everything. And yes, I don't like my dock even slightly like this. Uh, come on. So let's just go ahead and get rid of all of this. Uh, you can right click and manually just remove this. But if you drag and drop this like far away on the top navigation bar, it just removes everything. So uh, calendar, I'll, I'll keep it. No, I'll, I'll just remove it. So calendar also, we can just remove it. Notes, reminders. No, I don't use this reminders. Freeform, it's a good software, but not nah, TV. Definitely don't want to use it. Apple Music, no, I don't use it either. Podcast, yes, I, I like that much clean. I'll show you more of the cleanup process as well and my workflow that how it actually goes. You can see it much more cleaner now. And there we go. Now press Command Space, which is your spotlight, and I want to have Terminal. All the time, Terminal needs to be there, but this is too small of a terminal. So let's go ahead and change its preferences that I always do. So Settings. And uh, let's go ahead and change its profile. Yeah, that's too small of a font. Uh, I'm old, so this kind of a font doesn't work for me. Uh, this is too small. And I'll also go ahead and... Uh, yeah, that's, that's okay. I don't want to change too much of the colors because when actually you record videos and stuff, it looks too unobvious for the user that, hey, there is too much of going on into this. Now close this and let's quit this and uh, I use terminal. I'll show you a couple of other terminals and spotlight operations. This is much better, easier for people to see. I'll show you how I change my Z profile as well. This is too big of a profile for anything. Uh, we'll together do this. Now let's go into uh, the finder and cleanup. The cleanup is the most important for me. So there you can see a lot of files are there and I don't want a lot of such information to be there. This is mostly going to be a developer laptop. So uh, as much as I first, let's go ahead and go into settings because this is bothering me a lot. Let's go on to trackpad and let's enable everything. Scroll and zoom, all good, more gesture, uh, yep. Point and click. Tracking speed, I need a little bit faster one. Clicks are good. And uh, scroll and zoom. Yep, I have turned all of them in. And the more gesture is okay. Okay, that's great. Also, usually I change the mouse settings as well. Mouse and trackpad. Mouse keys, mouse options. Yeah, that's okay. Double click speed, spring load, and all of that. Uh, mouse keys, alternative point direction. No, not going to be working on that. That's okay as of now. Okay. Uh, there we go. Looks okay. But still, there are some settings missing. Let me just check them again. Okay, let's go into trackpad again. Bluetooth trackpad, secondary click to... Uh, okay, to click with... Yep, that's exactly what I want. Tap to click. Yep, that's what I was missing. I want tap. I don't want to just keep on bothering with the fingers drilling down into the stuff. So I usually keep it like that. Easy way. 
that's personal preference. All right, so let's see with the books. No, I cannot delete this. And uh, I don't want GarageBand, so definitely don't want that. Move to Bin. It's a too big of a software that I don't want. Uh, maybe people who are into more into music and stuff, they iMovie, I don't use it. Don't want to use it on this machine at least. If I'll be using, I'll be using directly Final Cut Pro, but yeah, Keynote, also don't want it. If I want to use, I'll use an online version of it. Save so much of the memory on the system. And uh, music, we cannot delete it. Numbers, I would love to delete it. And there we go. Saving too much of space. OBS, sometimes I use that for recording purposes, so I'll keep it. Pages, I don't use it. I use the online version of Google of all these alternate software, so they are much better for me. Podcast, we cannot delete it. I would love to, but we don't get the option of it, deleting it. And that's it. It already saved so much of my time, so let's just empty the bin. And there we go. And it already is saving so much of the space so that I can use it to record the videos and all of this. Okay, yep, now it's done. And as you can see, now we are into document. Everything is empty in the downloads. We have some couple of things, Google Chrome, OBS, and Mega. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Move to bin. And yes, I like to keep things very, very organized and very, very clean. So that's an obvious thing. And the next up is uh, we're going to go on to Finder and the settings or actually the windows. Let's go into settings of Finder. And hard disk, yes, I like to keep it. Don't want this one. So let's eject this. Uh, then we have sidebar. So which one do you want? Uh, home folder, yep, I'll keep the home folder on the sidebar. There are a couple of other folders you can keep it. And I'll just keep this much only. And rest I can just navigate when I want. There are advanced setting as well. So show file name extension. Yes, I love to do that. Always want to see that. And show view options. All right, so icons can be a little bit bigger. No point of having smaller ones. Text size, yeah, 14 is good enough. Show file item info. So you can see it's just a 512 uh, gigs of uh, free space here. That's enough, good enough. All right. So let's just open the finder and then I would love to see more views of it. So I'll say show all tabs, okay. Show tab bar, yep, that's what I want. Then I'll go ahead and say show path bar, yep, that's always a good idea. And show status bar, that's always a good idea. <laughs> so I always like to keep the things on just right in front of me so that I can easily see them. And then we're gonna have a customized toolbar. What else do you want on top of this here? Uh, already the default options are good enough, uh, but maybe you want to have an airdrop, sometimes I do that. Uh, take videos from my desktop to my phone and publish them on LinkedIn, on Instagram and a lot of things. So uh, probably an airdrop option would be good enough. Yeah, I'll just leave it. Uh, this time don't want to do it. So usually that's the basic stuff I do. Now let's go in here. So this is my home directory. Uh, and this is where actually things start a little bit uh, interesting. So, uh, by the way, I just press command, shift, and the dot. Uh, command, shift, and dot. This actually shows up the hidden files as well. Uh, you can do this with the command line terminal as well. I like to keep these files always in front of me so that I can see uh, where my ZSH profiles and ZSHRCs uh, and all these shells are there. It's very important for a developer to have them always around because you are always injecting the path files and all of them. So that's where I enjoy it more. So mouse setting is done, finder is done. So now let's go ahead and uh, install some of the softwares and properly organize and configure it. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go into this one and would love to create a new folder on this. There is an interesting folder you can create and everybody creates it. It's known as developer. And as soon as you create a developer folder, automatically Apple gives you this hammer icon, which I absolutely love. And I would love to just place it at the very top of it. So there we go, so that I can access it easily. And uh, now I'll create a couple of folders into this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and say YouTube. So all the YouTube stuff will go here. Uh, there are a lot of research work that I do and there are a lot of company work that I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and name the folder as PW. 
And by the way, you can press Command and I as a shortcut to go ahead and open this up just like this. And you can find more extension info and all these things, which I all the time use. And by the way, let's go ahead and find some of the logos as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and say YouTube logo. And I'll use this one. All right, so let's close this one and open up this one and open it up. And I'll just drag and drop this one here. YouTube logo and I'll just replace it just like this and there we go our logo is changed so I like to keep my YouTube folders and everything in my personal laptop I always do this but in when I'm actually recording the screens and all of that I never show this uh, because people get panicked about hey how, how come YouTube is there is YouTube installed in your system uh, I don't do that similarly I'll just add a logo of this so I'll just grab a logo of uh, my company where I'm currently working as a job so PW logo and we'll just drag and drop. I'll keep, I usually keep the logo inside the folder itself. Uh, that's actually a better approach. And there we go. This is JPEG. I would love to have a PNG, but okay. I'll figure it out later on. And open this up. And there we go. And uh, now I know that there is a couple of logos. And then there is a basic code that I'll be writing. So this is going to be personal code reference. So create a folder with the name of code. So all of the research work will go in the code. Anything that I have to research for the company work to record more videos for them will go into PW folder. And anything that I want to record or just uh, research for YouTube purpose will go up here. So that's the basic organized structure that I usually keep in my personal laptop. Uh, these are some fun stuff uh, that I actually love to use this. And apart from this, there are some files or folders. Let's just say I'm researching these days a lot on Next.js, so I'll just keep it organized like this, Next.js. All the folders, files, everything will go here. I usually use labels for them as well. Uh, there are a lot of labels that I use. You can just click on Show All and can have all the labels. So there is an active research going on it, so I'll use a purple onto this one, so that's it. Uh, these labeling helps me to organize things and later on search based up here, so I want uh, all tags up here, so I want all the purple ones to show up that where I'm working on. Uh, yes, this is my own productivity system. I use this a lot, uh, but it's pretty nice and easy. So I usually use that. So let's just open this up. Developer, much easier. All right. So next up is uh, we'll be having, uh, I won't be, usually the next thing that I do is go into the Chrome, sign up. I have different profiles with different emails and also I use a password manager. So I log into that. I'm not going to be doing it right away because it might expose some of the things which I don't want to. But password manager is one of the thing I always, always use. I highly recommend you to use one, whichever is your favorite. Uh, I already made a video about it that how you can install your own password manager if you wish. Uh, so that's the one thing. Uh, so really basic and absolute basic. All right. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, the notifications. Yep. That's one of the thing I love to just turn off. So there is notifications. And you can see that the preview sleeping. Uh, so I always go for a never. I don't want any notification from any calendar badge. Uh, I usually don't like it. Any notification is not a good thing. And allow notification when screen is logged. Uh, no, I just don't want ever notification from any of the app that I'm using. Okay, uh, this is attention span, so I don't want that. Okay, next up is uh, we're gonna be installing a few softwares and some terminal access. So first, let's go on to Google and say, I want to install my favorite, brew install. That's the first thing I do. And let's go ahead and copy this, open up our terminal, minimize this so that you can properly see it. And uh, there we go. This actually is going to require your password as well because this um, is a top level execution permission. Uh, it is going to install the Xcode command line tool as well. I'm not going to be installing Xcode because it's a too heavy, bulky software. Uh, it, it takes too much amount of time as well. And I don't have any much uh, urgent work to do on Xcode itself. Uh, yes, I'll be working on Flutter, but I'll be working it through the simulation of Android. That's far better and easier. Uh, so we'll be going with this. Yeah, it's downloading the command line tool. Uh, this is going to take some time, so bring your IST along with you. All right, so this took some time and really a lot of time because of the Xcode command line tools and the brew is almost all installed, but 
uh, there are a lot of people who miss this last instruction which says next steps. Obviously, it is right in front of your eyes. It says it. So please do this. It says that you need to set up your path so that you can access it from command line terminal. And for this, all you have to do is get this path and place it into the Z profile. So basically, you have to just copy this command and have to run it. And yes, that's all. That's all you have to do. Because without this, there is no ZSH profile or Z profile in which your command or your paths are being uh, added. So that's all you have to do. So copy this. Let's go here and uh, paste it. And uh, that's it. It doesn't return you anything because it's instruction to save some things in the Z profile. I'll show you that. And that's all it does. Now you can go ahead and eval this as well. So this is just a checker file. It is not compulsory to run it, but still we'll do it. And that's it. Now, what you have to do is, uh, you can go ahead and check this. Control L is to just clean everything on your terminal. And now I can just go ahead and say BRE, press the tab key and it automatically gives me suggestions. So break is one, brew is one. That means brew is installed. Uh, now, a couple of things before we go further, just write CD and hit enter. Uh, we are into the home directory. We can check the PWD, present working directory. And I'll open, I'll use Vim. Yes, I'm an old school Linux user. Uh, I don't show it much on to the camera and on the recording videos, but I use a lot of, in fact, I've never installed uh, anything to edit system files. Even if I have some editor installed, I always go for Vim. It's like a muscle memory. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that, hey, I want to go into uh, dot slash Z profile. Uh, sorry, slash dot Z profile. And there should be file. Let me go ahead and check this ls dash la. Uh, do we have this profile? Yes, we have Z profile. So we want to open this up. So I'm going to go ahead and say dot Z profile, open this up. And we can see this exactly is the command that is being added for us. That was that is actually coming up from the brew. Now press I to get into the insert mode. And you can just go ahead and move on to the end of this line. There are shortcuts as well. If you wish, I can make a video on the shortcuts and everything that I use for the Vim. But I would love to add one, one more line here, which is just editing my Z profile uh, the profile name so it goes something like this so we can go ahead and say uh, z profile custom customize and there are a lot of uh, things how you can customize you can feel free to just use any one of them there are a lot of articles around it and just see so there are a couple of them so that how you can configure them so it's into z shrc uh, all right, my bad. Uh, this is all we have to write. So PS1, yeah, just like ZSHRC. Uh, this is the one that I was using. The prompt is equal. So yep, we'll be going for that. But I was, turns out I was writing it in the wrong file. It's actually ZSHRC and my bad. I was writing it into the profile. Let's go back. And uh, we're going to just quit this one. And now we can see that we don't have any ZSHRC file. And this is interesting. You'll find your new uh, MacBook with, without this ZSHRC. Uh, this is a file you should be creating because there are a couple of other files and folders you'll be creating which actually uh, creates this for you. But let's go ahead and create this. The best thing about the Vim is it actually creates one file if you don't have this one. So what I want to do is uh, just create this ZSHRC. So let's just say I want to say dot and ZSHRC. If the file is not there, it will create one. So I'll go into insert mode and then I'll write uh, prompt, prompt, just like this. And we're going to say equal two quotes and then simply having a person sign n tilde dollar, tilde dollar. All right. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. Write and quit. And uh, yes, we need to close the terminal, uh, load it up again and uh, new window. Or I'll just close it entirely, quit the terminal and start it again. There we go. This is much better and less of a name. I just want the name to be here. Some people don't want it, the name to be there. So you can just remove the end. There are a couple of other nice make use of .com. There is no specific folder or specific website where I always go and look for it. It's something which is on the go. I, I always figure out things on the go, especially uh, when you have these kinds of configuration stuff. So. Terminal looks okay and we have brew installed. Brew is one of the magical thing and you can install pretty much anything through the brew. I always love to install everything through the brew and I'll show you that how actually this works. I'll minimize this for a minute. 
Let's go into the terminal and the first thing is let's check uh, the brew version that we have. So brew dash dash version. I don't remember the command. Is it dash dash version or dash version or dash help or something? But usually it is one of them, either dash version or dash dash version. So our version is fine. Let's go ahead and install some of the fun stuff with that. Uh, by the way, first one we're going to go ahead and do is brew install dash dash cask. And then we're going to say visual studio dash code. And uh, this is going to take some time, but this will install Visual Studio without me going on to Visual Studio Code website. And uh, by the way, in case you don't remember this, that's okay. You can always go ahead and uh, go on to Google and ask it. Seems like the internet is a bit slow. Uh, and say brew install VS Code. And it will give you, probably there's too much of downloading going on. Yep, there's a lot of downloading going on. Uh, so here's the formula of the brew. Almost everything can be found here. And this is the same command I used, brew install cask visual studio code. So yeah, exactly same. I happen to remember this because I use this a lot, brew. So that's all. Let me just wait for a second till it get installed. Till the time, just sip up your iced tea. All right, so VS Code is installed and you can, by the way, check this into the Finder and let's go into Applications and you're going to see somewhere here. Here we go, Visual Studio Code. We can launch it up through the terminal as well. We can say Code or Visual Studio Code just like this. Hit an Enter and it opens up. And obviously, uh, I'll, if you wish, I can make a separate video of setting it up, but setting it up is super easy. I did a live stream with the official VS Code guys on the Microsoft channel. You can check them out. All you have to do now is just sign in into your GitHub and it will sync it everywhere where you're using it. I usually use my custom design theme, which is specific for teaching purpose. So check out that live stream. That's much easier. Uh, there will be somewhere on the screen that how does it looks like. You can check it on official uh, Microsoft VS Code channel. All right, so this is all. Uh, now we need to install a node as well because I write a lot of type, uh, JavaScript and TypeScript as well. Uh, but for that, we're going to go again on Google and we're going to say NVM install. Now, I don't use uh, node directly by going just node, node.js.org and downloading and installing it. Uh, I usually recommend that and I always teach it like this to students because they are in the very early phase. But uh, usually all of the people you're going to see, they use node version manager because it allows you to install Node through different uh, versions of it at the same time on the system. I can install the 20, 18, 16, whatever the version suits me. And I can just go back here and can see the installation steps. So install and update. So this is a couple of things that you can go ahead and use it. I'll just use this command. And I guess, do we need to do some custom uh, ZSHRC? We have to run this command as well. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and try this out. These instructions do change a lot all the time, so make sure uh, you know which one you are actually using and properly read the documentation where it says how to install it and properly work on it. All right, so this looks, failed to clone the NVM repo, please report this, couldn't connect to server, failed to connect, unable to fetch. Is my internet working? Looks like my internet is working. All right, so let's go ahead and try this again curl and uh, yeah now is it working so you'll see these kinds of uh, funky things happening to you as well sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work uh, no such foolproof thing so if I go ahead and try nv nvm nope let's try to just restart the terminal and start it again and uh, do we have nvm here no 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 don't want to list all of them NVM. Nope. Okay. So let's go ahead and export this. Okay. Running either the above command, download the script and runs it. The script uh, clones the NVM repository, attempts to add it, C profile snippets to correct profile. Okay. Uh, we are onto the bash Z asset. So let's try to source it. Although we have restarted it, there is no need of it. But anyways, let's see what's happening. And also let's see what is happening into this dot. ZSHRC. There we go. We can see that the NVM is properly installed on our systems. Okay, let's go ahead and quit this. And let's see that how we can actually use it. Do we have a command dash V NVM? 
Okay, so how can I install multiple versions of it? That's the interesting one. We are looking forward for that. Uh, it says NVM install a node. Okay, this install latest version of the node. Okay, let's see if it does work. Uh, NVM install node. And by the way, you can give the version of it after it. Let's just say you want a 20 or something like that. You can give a version, but I'll just say NVM install node. And let's see if it works properly. Does it gives me a node environment? Which version? By the way, there is a latest 20 version, which is given to me. Okay, and now it's good. Let's see if we have node dash V and uh, node version. Okay. And let's just say NVM use shouldn't be there. NVM use node. Oh, node is not yet installed. All right. NVM install uh, node. And there we go. Now it's downloading. And do we have a version of node now? Nope. Looks like we need to restart the this is the same I said, NVM install node, NVM run node. Oh, my bad. <laughs> NVM. This is exactly what happens when you install it so many days after so many days. NVM run node. Version node is, oh, sorry, NVM. Oh, this is the same that we are saying, NVM run. Hmm. NVM install this used to work like this. It's been a while that I have actually switched into NVM, so that's why it's happening. <laughs> NVM install node. Or do I need to check the tutorials again? Not tutorial, but actually the documentation. Uh, now it's properly installing it. Didn't took this much of time previously. Hmm. Looks like this time it is doing some work. What it did earlier? I thought it was all installed at that time. All right, let's give it some time till it installed. Usually it's much more faster than this. Probably my internet is junky. All right, let's wait for a second. All right, so this one took little time. I don't know why it said to me earlier that, hey, we have installed it Node 20 and tried to use it, didn't worked out. Yeah, happens to everyone. So this is the default version. And now let's check if we have the Node-V. Uh, yes, we have version 20 uh, as. But the good thing about this is you can go ahead and say, hey, I want to install NVM install no, just 18. It will install the node 18 version. And then all you have to say is NVM use uh, 20. So it's going to switching to switch to you uh, to 20 version. And then similarly, you can say after installing saying 18 version, it will switch you to 18 version. It's very useful, very handy, especially if you are making tutorials on the cutting edge versions of it. I have a video very soon coming up on the Node 20 and some of the latest features which is offering. Uh, so yes, that's going to be really, really handy and helpful. All right, so uh, a lot of installation work is there. All right, so this is all done. Let's go ahead and try more. Okay, so the JavaScript environment is all done and good. Let's check out the Python environment. By the way, there is a Python environment that comes up here. Uh, Python-V and uh, I think that's Python 3. Uh, Python 3 that comes up. Yep. So there is a Python 3.9, which is pretty decent. I don't want to update it too much. All right. So I think we do have Python version. Yes, I do have some college work as well uh, to do with Python. Upcoming projects are coming in Python. So yes, expect some tutorials on Python as well soon. Uh, so all right. Uh, but I'm going to love to install a Python utility. Uh, so uh, brew install uh, mini Conda. Uh, the full-fledged Anaconda is actually too big and too bulky. I don't want that into my smaller system. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and get Miniconda. It actually helps you to get multiple versions of Python again. And you can create multiple environments in which you can install multiple things. So for example, if I'm working on NumPy library, I can go and have it on another uh, environment. If I'm working purely on Django, I can have it in another environment. So I usually like to keep it there. So let's go ahead and install this. Hopefully this time it will install much more reliably as compared to the previous one. Uh, so yeah, much faster. Whenever it happens so fast, I'm I'm like, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. And there we go. All right, taking time, that's good. But just the time taking for unpacking. All right, so let me just wait. Ah, there we go. The moment I say wait and it just does everything. 
There are so many libraries that it installs by default for you, which is more than enough for anybody to just get started with that. Uh, but in case you are a full-fledged Python developer, go ahead and install full-fledged Anaconda. Uh, you can just search for it that instead of Miniconda, you want an Anaconda version of it. And Brew will probably give you that. And there we go. Same, just say Anaconda. This is a full-fledged version. It's too big and bulky for my MacBook Air. I think this is more than enough already for me. All right. So it's successfully installed. And that's it. That's all what we want to do. And then probably we should have now the conda command. So probably need to restart this. Yes, this terminal restart happens a lot. So yeah, now we can see that we have this command as conda. And let's run this conda and try to have an environment list. And we should be having just one, which is the base. But we can install as many environments as we wish. And that will give us more environments. So all you have to do is probably say conda in it. And let's just say we want another profile. Uh, so I'll just say zsh profile. This is just a name. And reopen your current shell. All right, so we have new conda base. This looks good. Let's restart this. And now let's run one more time. So there we go. Why notice here now we are into the base. But if I go ahead and tell it to list me the environment list. So now we are into the base. But we can switch on to another one. Probably the last command didn't work out well. Uh, so we have initialized it for the ZSH profile. And there we go. Let's try to build another one. Or I'm going to go ahead and right now just say conda. Uh, deactivate and oh sorry coda <laughs> uh, conda deactivate and there we go now the profile is not there so base is gone uh, so we have activated it for zsh profile but if you have an in profile you can go ahead and work on with that all right so seems like my conda situation is under control python is much more easier and uh, there we go let's close this all right a lot of stuff is going on all right, uh, next up, what I want to do is my Python situation is handled, my JavaScript situation is handled. Uh, next up is the heavy one, the Android Studio. So Brew install, yes, I love to install everything through Brew. That's so much easier. And Brew cask Android Studio, yes, you can install the full-fledged Android Studio with that. And uh, why is it not getting deactivated? Quit terminal. And uh, there we go, let's just say, Conda deactivate. Yeah, why is it getting activated by default? Don't want that. Probably need to change some settings in the file, but we'll do that. Okay, let's paste this. Brew install cask Android Studio. Not that this is going to bother you. The conda default, when it comes up, it's not going to bother you much. Only the utilities that you install for Python or the Python packages, they will be installed in that sandboxed environment. Rest will be same. So no big deal. Uh, this one I expect is going to take a hell lot of time. Uh, these days, the good thing is that with the Endo Studio, the Java also comes, so you don't have to separately install it. But even if you have to, then you can just go ahead and say brew install and you can install OpenJDK version 11. If you're building any kind of mobile apps, uh, whether in React Native or Flutter, uh, the recommended version is OpenJDK 11, which is supported a lot and it's far more better than installing the latest one. There are a lot of licensing issues in that, so probably you want to avoid that. Uh, let's wait for a second till it installs the Android Studio for us. All right, so looks like it's almost done, 100%. And <laughs> this is going to take a couple of more minutes to finally configure it and getting ready, get it ready for me. Let's check in the meantime that what's happening in our Finder and Application folder. And Application folder, uh, looks like the Android Studio is still not yet here. It will be, it will be, don't you worry. It takes some time. Still going to take some couple of more minutes. Let me pause the video in the meantime. All right, so finally it is here. Let's check into the application folder, whether we have got, yes, we have got Android Studio and we can just double click and open it up directly. And I would love to see whether I have Java or not. So meantime, it's just popping up and down. <laughs> Let's go ahead and Check whether do we have Java. It is dash dash version or dash version. Don't remember it. Uh, unable to locate Java runtime. Uh, it usually is there. Let me just close this terminal and start it again. This is a common thing. Let's go ahead and see whether this profile has loaded. Otherwise, we'll install it 
uh, directly. So we're going to say Java dash version. Unable to locate Java runtime. So we'll probably install Java directly and I need to just really get this conda. I don't want it. Uh, do we have Java? Probably don't have it. We need to install Java 11 just with the... It usually comes with Android Studio, but probably there's some issue. Usually it's not that. Okay, don't import anything. And yeah, don't send anything. And should be taking all the repository fetch. Next. It's a standard. Yep. I'll just go with the dark mode. Android simulator, build SDK tool, Google API, SDK player, source. Uh, this is a bit of a, a lot of stuff, but can't do anything. We have to install it. And yes, what else I can do? I have to accept all of these things. Yes, I have to accept this as well. And finish. This is definitely going to take some time. So luckily we are in the video editing, so we can just fast forward this. I'll just say show details and I'll pause the video till the time it does all the things. You don't need to watch this. Huh, finally, it is all done and installed. Uh, so let's just finish this up. And yep, let's click on the SDK manager. These are a couple of things you need to do. Uh, the Android 13 Tiramisu is installed. Okay, uh, and SDK tools. Uh, we definitely want to check this one again and make sure there are a couple of Android SDK command line tools. Yep, we need absolutely 100% we need this. Uh, and then Android SDK platform tools, emulator is good. Uh, play services, yes, we are going to need play services. Otherwise, you'll be running and working through some of the apps which uses some of the internet or Google Play services, won't be available there. So yes, we need this one. A web driver, we don't need. Haxon, if you wish, you can install this. I don't need it as of now. If I'll need it later on, I can come back. SDK updates, no such big deal. So all you have to do is just click on OK, OK. And it will again uh, go into the installation mode. Accept the license, next. And shouldn't take that much of the time, just 73 MB. And these are compulsory steps that you need to do. Otherwise, things will not be that much great for you. All right, looks good, finish. And let's try again, SDK Manager. And looks okay, SDK Tools. Yep, we are properly. Uh, notice here there is a path here as well, slash user, slash Hitesh, whatever your name is of the laptop. And library, Android SDK. These are the things we need to set up because these are not directly set. And uh, let's go ahead and actually use this. And uh, so what we're gonna do is, let's go into Google and say, uh, set Android path in Mac and Stack Overflow is always a great idea to work on with this. Let's try this. All right, so we are here and all we need to do is just set up all these paths. Uh, the problem with them is, notice here it says username and this one instruction is for the bash profile. The bash profile is not here. We're into ZSHRC, so all we have to do is copy all of this. And by the way, this is exactly the same path. If you notice here slash users, then whatever the name, library Android SDK. And we just checked it here, users, home, library, Android SDK. So it's exactly same path. If yours is different, go ahead and check it out and use it differently. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. First, I'll open up my VS code. I usually keep a sublime text for such operations and we'll paste it. And instead of this username, we are gonna go ahead and replace it with my name or my laptop's name. And now we have to just copy all of this and have to paste it into the ZSHRC. Or is it ZRC? ZSHRC, all right. Uh, we'll go with the Vim, classic Vim. And let's just say, I want to have a Vim and dot ZSHRC and open this up. And we have a lot of things going on into this one. So Conda setup install, uh, we'll go I to get into insert mode. And I think we can just press P. Uh, we have to go into escape and then we can see P. Nothing to register, so it doesn't copy and paste like this. Usually you can just press uh, Y to copy and P to paste. I'll set up a different <laughs> videos for that. I'll just go into this. And we'll say insert mode and I can actually directly copy and paste into this one. I'll directly say copy. 
and we'll paste just like that all right this time it works all right so this looks good and there we go so we have all the path android home uh, by the way you don't need all of them to be set up uh, the minimum that you need is first this android home this path needs to be there then we need this sdk path as well so platform tools this needs to be there and then there is this one tool slash bin so these are the compulsory ones that you need to have all right so as of now this looks good so we're going to just say escape colon wq write and quit and uh, we need to just close and restart it again hopefully this time it's going to have an android path working let's see if we go ahead and do echo android home so this should load up that's the theory to test it out and uh, there we go it loads up nice and easy so this is basic requirement now let's go ahead and test out java dash or we can just write java we don't have java here so we're gonna go again to brew so we want a brew install uh, jdk 11 and uh, there is a nice here and brew install open jdk 11 copy this paste it up here and that's all we probably need to do uh, these two are really required in case you are you will be working with flutter react native any mobile development that you need to do you need these two guys without them any installation is or anything that you want to do is not going to work this is a lot of setup environment all right so it took a lot of time and finally it is here uh, but when you install uh, open jdk like this setting up the path is really important otherwise none of uh, your application will be able to find it up uh, so all we need to do is first notice here it says java wrapper to find this jdk sim link it with that all you got to do is copy and paste this so yes this is the instruction that you have to follow uh, the first step is here again elevated operations so provide a password just like this and then it also says that it's a keg only uh, probably we'll talk about the keg only later on it's a mac specific thing uh, all we need to do is set up the path and have to say it like this so open jdk notice it saves this into again zshrc so in such cases where you directly actually run this command it creates one file if uh, one doesn't exist for you i'll just hit enter uh, that's it and also finally what we need to do is uh, export this flag so that compilers can actually find it and yes this is the last one so paste this and there we go now we can probably open up uh, zshrc uh, there we go and should be having all these details so notice here homebrew uh, open jdk path everything is probably installed set up uh, that's all you need probably uh, i think that's only one path you need for the java installation if not we can again come back and always work like that so escape quit there we go and now probably uh, i should be having java now so if i go ahead and say java come on yeah now we have a lot <laughs> okay that's the fun part dash v or dash dash version dash dash v come on how can i check the java path <laughs> i don't remember that either yeah there we go who remembers these kinds of commands everybody just looks for it hints for it and all of that you see two very much polished tutorials <laughs> nobody remembers that all right so this looks good and everything is properly set and uh, that's a wrap and probably I need to now go on to the next phase. So obviously I'll need more databases to work on with. Usually I work with the online versions of it. Uh, but again, sometimes you need some offline versions of it. So I need to install some databases. Who install databases these days? Nobody. Uh, everybody just goes through the Docker way of it. So I'll just go with the Docker way as well. And let's see if we have Docker. And again, brew install Docker. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it and let's go for it brew install docker is it going to take too much of the time yeah this one is also going to take some good amount of time uh, that we can pause it's not that much of a big software all right so disable this behavior by setting homebrew no install cleanup no i'm happy with this uh, let's see if we have docker oh, do we have docker like this should be having a docker like this let's go ahead and see if we have docker installed up here no we don't have let's check in the application do we have docker no don't we don't have docker 
what this is saying. Sometimes it just does all the things and I don't have Docker installed like this. Really bad. Or do I need to just download it? Already installed. So let's just see if in the command line we have Docker. No, we don't have Docker just like this. Let's restart the shell. Probably that's the issue. Or I'll uninstall it. Yeah, we have Docker. Yeah, we have Docker. If I can get the Docker like this. Now we don't get the the visual version of the Docker, so that's bad. Let's go ahead and say brew uninstall docker. That's the great thing about the brew that you can just go ahead and uninstall it, install it. I'll probably go ahead and get the visual version of it, the GUI, and I'll say docker download docker desktop. Probably I should be asking for brew to have the docker desktop installed. Probably I'm asking wrong. Brew install docker desktop and install docker desktop on Mac. Okay, let's see. With Intel chip with Mac Apple Silicon. Oh, that's, no, I don't want to go into that much of depth. Cast docker, nah, I'll just go with the basic one. Download, let's download, this is not, I want Apple chip. Oh, 590 MB, quite a lot, but that not, not that big. We can just go ahead and wait wait for it. Uh, cookies, I don't need to say anything till the meantime it gets download. Okay, so this will solve all of my issues regarding Postgres, MongoDB, or any other thing that I want to install, AppWrite, whatever the uh, database, anything that I want to install. Again, it's your preference. Uh, sometimes your preference goes more with the command line. Sometimes it goes better like this. All right. Verifying the Docker DMG. Okay, when you're going to install. All right, that's it, I guess. Ah, it's copying now. Two gigs. When you're running short on the gigs, which is space uh, free on your desktop, two gigs seems like too big. All right, let's wait for a couple of seconds till it copies all of the things. All right, so this goes nice and we can just move on it here. We don't need this now. Let's reject this. Let's see if we have Docker. And uh, there we go, Docker app. I'll not log into it because that's probably going to take another some time and it's just a login, uh, no such big issue there. And it should be up here in the bar some sometimes. Come on, open this up. Yep, open this up. Too many of the tabs. And there we go. We can probably close the Android Studio now. Yep, you can quit this. And yes, I accept the terms. And there we go. Docker is up, so I don't need to install any further requires password. Yeah, just go for it. Oh, that's nice. I can use my finger. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want any notification. No notification, no notification. Android Studio, force quit, of course. If Android Studio is not going to crash, who will? And uh, what is your role? Skip that. Just give me the Docker engine. All right, so finally the Docker engine is up and running. I haven't logged in into it so that all of my images and what all I'm working is not synced. All right, so in the meantime, I've also logged in into GitHub because we need to configure and set the GitHub. We'll be pushing some code here as well. And all you have to do is log in into GitHub and there's the SSH and uh, GPG keys. I won't be talking about GPG keys in this video because it requires a little bit more complex setup. And it gives you that verified green tick that, hey, the, the system which is sending these updates or the uh, push to the repositories are actually verified. Uh, but this is SSH key is enough. We can just click on the new SSH key. Uh, we have to generate the SSH key from our system and there is a command, I'll give you that. So this is the one, SSH key gen, uh, dash dash RSA. Uh, you can use other methods as well, but we'll go for RSA. Uh, copy this, make sure you give your own email ID for that. I'll just click up here and I already generated one and uh, I'll generate another one. So this will generate a key for us, RSA key. Uh, it will, it usually doesn't take this much of time. 
All right, do it faster, please. There we go. File name, yep, we'll go direct one. Passphrase, no, because I'll be anyways changing this file once I finish recording this videos. Passphrase, and there we go. Uh, next up is we need to copy this key on the clipboard. So we'll just use the pv copy command to copy this. So we can just go on to this and say paste it. And now in theory, it should be on my clipboard now. Let's test it out. We can go up here, paste it. There we go. And don't change anything here. Just keep it as it is. Title, we're going to call it as a MacBook Air. And add SSH key. All right, so Git, we won't be going that much in depth because there's nothing too much of it. Once you add your SSH key, that's it. That's it. It works out of the box. Uh, probably in some cases, you might need to add your SSH agent to your uh, keychain, which is very basic. Again, it's given in the documentation itself. If you want me to walk through of it, I can do that. This is already a really long video. Uh, so now, technically, in theory, this MacBook is ready for work. I'll definitely make more videos. If you have any doubt or questions around it, just let me know. I'll be doing all of my mobile development, my college work on Python, as well as my tutorial that I do on the channel regarding JavaScript, all of this in this small machine. This is perfectly capable of doing it. I won't be doing my video editing on it because that's gonna be too much on this uh, a small mini machine. But yeah, that is it. If you need to walk through, have a walkthrough of installation of anything of uh, more than these, let me know in the comment section. I would love to do that for you. But yeah, this was a really long video. I don't know if somebody will be watching it or not, but yeah, this is it. Thank you so much for watching this really long tutorial. It was really difficult to make it one, uh, but we finally did it and I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Hit that subscribe and let's catch up in another such video.